Here's a clip of the first video that I posted to this channel. It's an animation of two coaxial counter-rotating airplane propellers. I posted the video without any context or discussion. My thought at the time was that I was posting just a cool animation with some jazzy background music. But the video had lots of views and also lots of questions in the comments. So I'm doing this follow-up video to show a simpler animation that maybe does a better job of showing how this particular type of counter-rotating gearbox works. I also hope to answer some of the questions that were posted to the comments. Here's a less complex animation than the first. So to help visualize this, the colors show the direction of rotation for each of the gears. So blue turns one direction and red always turns opposite the blue direction. In the comments, many of you asked if this was a viable configuration. People generally said that airplane counter-rotating gearboxes are planetary gear sets, and the Russians were very on point with this, I think because the Tupolev Tu-95 uses a planetary gear set for its counter-rotating propellers. So yeah, so there's more and better ways of creating counter-rotation than I showed in this first video. In fact, there's an entire NASA technical memorandum. It's dated from 1982, and the link is in the description. It's titled, Technology and Benefits of Counter-Rotation Propellers. This NASA memo discusses eight different arrangements that allow coaxial propellers to counter-rotate, and it explains the advantages and disadvantages of all eight designs. The image quality is poor, but what you see on the screen here are the eight different configurations. The one that I animated, the simpler version of which is now on the screen, was an attempt at showing a dual compound with an idler gear that was used on the Rolls-Royce Griffin engine on the Avro Shackleton bomber, and also a few other aircraft. The NASA report acknowledges that this type of gearbox was an early technology for counter-rotation, and it doesn't have the same propulsive efficiency of more modern designs, mostly more modern designs that do use planetaries. The report has a good discussion of the considerations that were brought up in the comments to the first video. Now, there's also a link in the description to a video of an actual Rolls-Royce Griffin gearbox that's been cut away to show the mechanism inside. Some of the other commenters questioned how the two shafts of the gearbox could turn at the same rotational speed when the animation obviously used different size wheel and pinion gears. And it's not only possible to have different size gears, but it's also necessary. And I'll try to show this more clearly than I did in the first video. So to start, I'll hide everything except for the 14 tooth red gear and the 42 tooth blue gear. So 42 divided by 14 is 3, so these two gears are turning at a 3 to 1 ratio. Um, if I then add a 14 tooth idler gear, that's obviously going to turn at a 1 to 1 ratio with the existing 14 tooth gear. Um, if I then add a counter shaft with a 16 tooth gear on it, it should be obvious that these are turning at the same speed because they're mounted to the same shaft. So in the back gears, there's a 3 to 1 ratio, and that comes from a 14 and a 42 tooth gear. If I add a 48 tooth gear to the front set, that's uh, 48 teeth on a 16 tooth pinion. So 48 divided by 16 is 3, 42 divided by 14 is 3. So both the front and the back gears have the same speed. To show why it's also necessary to have different size gears, I modeled the same configuration, but with both the counterclockwise and the clockwise gear sets having the same 14 to 42 or 3 to 1 ratio. If I turn this around, you see that the gears clash. So this is an impossible configuration. Different size gears are actually needed to achieve counter-rotation with this dual compound gears with an idler gear. And just to say it again, um, what I animated here was only one way of achieving coaxial counter-rotation of propellers. There are other ways. The NASA report had eight different ways. There's probably more out there than that. Um, just very quickly, here's another animation of a bevel gear configuration, then also the planetary configuration. Another common question I saw in the comments asked about the software that I used to create these animations. So up until now in this video, everything you've seen is Blender. That's how I did the animations and the renders. All of the 3D modeling was done using Fusion 360. After doing the modeling in Fusion 360, I exported the bodies as 3MF files, imported them into Blender, and did the uh, animations from there.